Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble, and we'll be here until, uh, hopefully, until midnight tonight, uh, uh, depending on how the show goes. Uh, hopefully we'll make it all the way to that time without giving up totally. Uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, so if you're anywhere in the world... Uh, just to compensate for that, and you can tell whether we're live or not. If I, we weren't live, could I do that? I guess. I guess I could. I know. Anyway, hello. How are you? Uh, uh, tonight I have no guest. Uh, it's just me and you and uh, me talking about stuff. Uh, and it, it always is a great quandary to me about what I'm going to talk about. And then I start talking about something. And I uh, then start uh, rambling on that subject. And before you know it, it's time to go to the citizen panel. So hopefully that will be the case tonight. And what I have to talk about is interesting to you. Um, there is this new show on AMC. And it is called AMC Visionaries. And the first set of them, I don't know how many episodes there are, is James Cameron's History of Science Fiction. Uh, and it is a program about the history of science fiction, and it's hosted by James Cameron, produced by his company, and he has everybody on this show. I mean, Steven Spielberg, and uh, I think Francis Coppola was on it somewhere. Uh, name the director, Ridley Scott. The nice thing about uh, the gracious thing, which I about Ridley about uh, Cameron was that he said to Ridley Scott, he said, you know, your alien was the best alien. And I thought that was really nice because if you may remember, James Cameron produced the sequel and directed the sequel called Aliens, which I think is a far better picture than Alien, okay? Uh, but it's a great series, and if you haven't had a chance to watch it, uh, it, it talks about science fiction and, and about the movies, and the first episode deals with aliens, Okay, and all the movies that have been made about aliens. And as I watched this, I, uh, it, it brought back a lot of my, uh, my youth uh, because I was a big science fiction nerd when I was a kid. Um, uh, it all began, I think, for me with a couple of movies, one of which was not really science fiction and the other one, well, wasn't really. It was kind of science fiction. Uh, they were two pictures, and they both had to do with rocket ships, and they both had to do with uh, going to another orb, okay? The first one was Destination Moon. It was produced by George Pal, who for years had done things called puppet tunes, where he used puppets um, to do these cartoons, you know, the kind of stop-motion animation they did with puppets. Well, he started making movies, and the first movie I think that he did make was Destination Moon, in which he... He employed what he knew up to that point about special effects. And if you look at the film, it's very crude by today's standards. But, you know, uh, there's something in, in special effects that's called suspension of disbelief. And the great thing about his films were, and the early films were, yeah, they kind of looked phony. And you could almost see the string the rocket was hanging on. And... Uh, it was all kind of crudely done, and you could tell a lot of it was done on a sound stage and so on. And because of that, for you to buy it, you have to suspend your disbelief. And you go with it. And I found Destination Moon just, it just piqued my interest in space like no other movie had ever, had, I, I can't think of any movie that, that made me want to become an astronaut. Uh, when I was in high school, it wasn't even such a thing as an astronaut. When I was in grade school and then high school, it's about 1953, I think, was Destination Moon. I wanted to be an astronaut whenever that day came that they were hiring astronauts. And they used to call me Moon Rocks Bennett. That was my nickname because I, I was so into space. And the picture that did it for me was Destination Moon. 
because what they tried to do with the knowledge that they had at the time was to create a very realistic scenario about how you would go to the moon and how you would face uh, the challenges of going to the moon. And, uh, you know, I mean, a little off, a single-stage rocket, nah, well, that, that, that wasn't eventually to be. Yeah, Three-stage rockets, yeah, but not single-stage. And, um, you know, it lands on the moon, and they get out and they bounce around, and then they find out that they don't have enough... Uh, uh, fuel to get back because some has leaked out, so now they've got to empty the ship out, and all kinds of things like that, right? Uh, uh, but uh, it was a movie that just grabbed my attention. And in the middle of it was a, a cartoon by a cartoon character that I, to this day, cannot stand, Woody Woodpecker. But they had Walter Lance do about a three- or four-minute cartoon expl explaining space travel to a bunch of uh, investors, you know. Here's how we're going to do it. And that gave me my first real knowledge of, of, of how you would get to the moon. And, and pretty much, you know, they, they, they did it as they knew it at the moment. Because nobody had gone into space yet. Nobody had sent a rocket up. Sputnik hadn't even happened yet. Um, so they were all doing this on uh, what they knew at the time was the science. And uh, there was a great um, artist. His name is Chesley Bonestell. Chesley Bonestell was, for all practical purposes, the outer space artist. In other words, you would say to him, uh, Chesley, what would Mars look like if we were there? And then he would draw a picture of everything that he knew scientifically about Mars, of what Mars approximately would look like if you were on the surface of Mars. And so he did a lot of the, the renderings and so on for this movie. Uh, and... Um, he was a great artist. Uh, the pal, I think, employed him in several films. Uh, Conquest of Space was another one that uh, Pal did. And I'm trying to think. He, he, I think he may have... Oh, I don't think he used him in War of the Worlds. But I, I don't remember. Anyway. Uh, this picture, more than any other, got me interested in space and in the possibilities of space. Now, there was one other movie. It was in black and white. And uh, it was done by Robert Lippert, who had a very cheap B-movie firm. And uh, they, they wanted to beat Destination Moon to the box office, so they beat him by a couple of days or something like that. And it was in black and white, uh, and it was called uh, Rocket Ship XM. And in this particular case, the rocket ship gets veered off or something, winds up going to Mars, and then you deal with all the stuff that goes on on Mars. It didn't have the same kind of scientific information. It didn't have the great Chesley Bonestell renderings and things like that uh, to make it seem more real. But it still was very, you know, it was very, very good. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was a film that I enjoyed watching, and I guess I went to go see over and over and over again, okay? Uh, and the same thing with Destination Moon. Now, they were the only two real sci-fi pictures out at the time. Shortly after that, you started having some of the really stupid sci-fi movies. You had, uh, you know, Abbott and Costello go to Mars. And uh, uh, what was it, the thing with uh, Zsa Zsa Gabor, uh, Women on the Moon or something like that. You know, and they were kind of goofy, but there weren't any real good uh, science somewhat accurate films being made at the time. And then, of course, there were the horror films that came along. That was a big thing of the day, too. But they were also really cheap-ass monsters like The Blob and, and so on. But I, uh, I, 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 I got a great love for science fiction. And I guess you would have to call these science fiction, even though they tried to base them somewhat on fact. All right? Um, so uh, I... Uh, uh, I love these movies, and I love science fiction, so I started reading science fiction. And since I was a kid, I read kids' science fiction. And there was a great writer who was writing for kids. Now, you know him uh, because he wrote a, a book called Stranger in a Strange Land, which later became a really big bestseller uh, to uh, a whole hippie and uh, beat generation and new generations and so on. But Robert Heinlein, who was the author of that, did a series of books for kids. And one was called, I remember I liked it, Farmer in the Sky. 
and another one was called Space Cadet. And uh, there was another one, uh, Red Planet Mars. And all of these I really loved reading because he wrote great sci-fi for me, a kid. And so my whole love of science fiction was created by Robert Heinlein uh, and uh, also uh, uh, George Powell and, to a lesser extent, Lippert with uh, Rocket Ship XM. Uh, then, as I, as I started to grow up, science fiction matured a bit. Um, it, it matured to the point where we then had the first color TVs coming into the households, and NBC decided they were going to have their entire schedule in color because the color TVs were coming into households, and they were trying to sell them because they were owned by RCA. And one of the shows they put on they felt would be really colorful was a thing called Star Trek. And Star Trek was original. It was a first of its kind. And it was original in that it had an entirely different approach to science fiction. You know, it wasn't the monster of the week that was ha attacking people or um, uh, y y these outlandish scenarios. It was more about the people and also that the ultimate goal is for everybody to live in peace with each other. And so this made for a rather, I think, great television series, which uh, if you go back to the original Star Trek, uh, yeah, a lot of people won't watch them. Now, kids today won't watch them because they, the special effects aren't whiz-bang, although they have gone back and redone the special effects, you know, in the latest versions that you see. Uh, but they, they still have the same kind of almost blocky look of the uh, Starship Enterprise. But what made it so great was, again, you had to do the suspension of disbelief because they were trying to produce special effects on a uh, network show budget. you got to realize every time they had somebody beam up or beam down and do that effect, I think it cost something like $3,000 each time they did it. And for a show on a network, you know, you're blowing a whole salary for a couple of actors on that, on just beaming people up and down. So sometimes you didn't beam them up much and beam them down much. They beamed them up once, beamed them down. The rest of the time, you saw them go being on the planet and so on. But I love Star Trek. I thought Star Trek was an original. There was nothing like it before it. Uh, the and and this is going to uh, uh, attach itself to what I'm going to say to you. Uh, and it is something that I think is, is very important because I love science fiction. Uh, I don't over-intellectualize it. You know, I think science fiction is at its best when it's just using its imagination. It's not trying to do subtexts and things like that, you know. And uh, I love the original Star Trek. Did I love Star Trek The Next Generation? Yes in its own way. Uh, did I like uh, Deep Space Nine? I thought it was the best of the Star Trek uh, franchise when it came to an interesting plot line. It was almost Shakespearean in nature. But none of them were as good as the original because the original was, we use the word again, original. And every time you t attempted to do another Star Trek, you were simply copying on a certain form. You were trying to improve it, but you were never getting back to the basics. And um, what I guess bothers me is, uh, listen, you know, they have Star Trek Discovery on now. This is the latest iteration of uh, Star Trek. And it's, I like the show. I think it's great. I think the special effects are terrific and wonderful. But it's not Star Trek. It's Star Trek in name only. Because Star Trek dealt in visions of the future, uh, hopeful visions of the future, where all other science fiction was like uh, aliens come down and they try and kill people. And, you know, uh, there was one, uh, the first one I ever saw with a guy coming down was The Man from Planet X. Oh, what a terrible movie. Uh, but all, there were a lot of movies where space didn't have a hopeful future. And in Star Trek, there was a hopeful future. Well, I, I didn't see that hopeful future 
in Star Trek Discovery. All I saw was the name Star Trek, and then they said, okay, uh, we'll make this, then we have all the, uh, all the various components of Star Trek, which are you have Klingons and you have uh, uh, Kardashians, and uh, that's a funny that that name exists in this context. Uh, and uh, I think what bothered me about it is I liked it. I, I could watch it, I, you know, uh, and it was okay, but it wasn't original. And, you know, we really, if you think about it, haven't had any real science fiction in, in years. I mean, I think the last time it happened was maybe Star Wars was original. That's why Star Wars was such a hit. It was just totally different than any other science fiction that had come before. It was almost science myth. And um, uh, it was a wonderful movie. And they made that movie, and they made the sequel. It was terrific. Uh, the third one with the Ewoks made me want to puke. But after that, forget it. There weren't, I don't even, even the latest one, there weren't great Star Wars movies. But Star Wars was the innovation. Star Wars was an original. So we've got Star Trek, which is an original. We have Star Wars, which is an original. Um, and that's it. Everything else is we're remaking Lost in Space. Yeah, they did, they did a pretty good job with it. You know, it was okay. It was fine. You know, I felt Parker Posey was a little wrong for the part. But, you know, uh, uh, but they did a, a redo of Lost in Space. And, but they always bring it up to another level. And I guess the reason we like the original Lost in Space is because it had a cheese factor. You know, it wasn't a, 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 a wonderful, uh, uh, sophisticated, technically uh, show. The trouble is when you suddenly have all this technology and you have all this uh, ability to create these universes and stuff, you, you, the, the, the special effects overwhelm the use of the people. And so therefore where these other shows like the original Lost in Space, original Star Trek, were all about people because they didn't have whiz-bang effects so they had to deal with scripts and writing plots and things like that. In this case, th there were just tons of flying, you know, special effects everywhere. And special effects were hard for you to tell from the real thing. So therefore, what do we lose? That suspension of disbelief. And that's the trouble with a lot of this stuff. There's no suspension of disbelief. There's no little element where you go, well, if I'm going to believe that, I better buy into that. Okay? Uh, and so, I mean, for all that Star Trek, the new one, looks great, you know, it's, it's not an original. Lost in Space is not an original. Uh, the Star Wars they're doing now isn't Star Wars. It's not the original. It's got the same characters and patterns and names of bad guys and good guys, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have the soul, okay? And, I, and I'm saying this from a guy who loves science fiction, so I was thinking about this when I was watching this at James Cameron show the other day that, you know, very few times have we had real originals. I think we might say that Ridley Scott's Alien was an original, in a way, okay, in that it, it created a new genre, which was horror science fiction, but in an entirely different way. You know what, what Alien was? Alien was a haunted house movie. You know, everybody goes into this house, and it's haunted with ghosts, and the ghosts eventually try to kill them off, and you know, maybe there's one person left who gets away left, you know, uh, uh, a lot of those Freddy movies were that way too. Uh, but it was a haunted house movie. But it was a good haunted house movie. And it again created something that hadn't been seen before. And so therefore, uh, uh, you know, I have to look back at Alien and say, okay, that's an original too. But there aren't very many originals. Everything else has been it just it hopped on the back of other genres or other things that people were doing and um it really wasn't uh they really aren't that that good and they say well, what about the marvel stuff isn't that original no it's not original they were comic books to start out with you know they're not original at all the originality was in the comic books if you want to talk about comic books then we can get into that you know that's a whole nother thing you know, although it did, it, it, comic books never informed my desire for uh, science fiction, though. 
Uh, but anyway, you know, uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention the one that really started it all off for me. Well, it didn't start it all off for me because I saw, I saw, I think, Destination Moon before Flash Gordon came to television, the Flash Gordon serials from, uh, from, from Universal. And once I saw those, I loved those. And I loved them again because, hey, you know, the fact they even did those special effects was amazing. But they don't look real. You know, and, and so you have to like suspend your disbelief, and so I like the like the Flash Gordon stuff. I even love Buster Crab's version of uh, of uh, Buck Rogers. Uh, I think there was only one Buck Rogers and three serials of Flash Gordon, both with Buster Crab. Um, so I mean, I love science fiction, and I wish somebody would come out with another original, something that is new and different and comes to the subject from a different direction altogether. Uh, the same way that George Lucas, after there was years of sci-fi going on, suddenly came out with something that when you went to it and saw it, you suddenly said, this is a whole different breed. You know, this is a whole different thing. And um, I really, I really, really, uh, uh, you know, loved it. And I love science fiction. And I just wish, you know, Lost in Space were better. Uh, I, I, I wish Lost in Space didn't even exist, actually, the new one, or any of them, because this, this desire to redo things, because you think you can do them better, when the reason why something may have been popular in the first place was a certain love that people had for the cheesiness of the show, you know, I mean, yeah, they got a really good real-looking robot on this show, but doesn't, doesn't hold a candle to Robbie the robot who just looked like a tin can with a guy inside, you know? And then he went, oh, I saw him. He was, he was in Forbidden Planet. Which, by the way, if you want to talk about a movie that was different than most of the sci-fi movies of the time, Forbidden Planet was one of them that was, specifically because at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, they said, well, let's do a sci-fi movie. And somebody said, well, we're Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. We have to do it smart and well. Well, what should we do? Why don't we do The Tempest by Shakespeare as a sci-fi film? And that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what happened with Forbidden Planet. And Robbie the Robot was the, the robot in the movie. Uh, and then, of course, he wound up on, uh, on Lost in Space, and that's where everybody remembers him for the wonderful phrase, Danger Will Robinson, Danger, Danger. But um, it's okay. Come out with your new Star Treks. Come out with your new... Um, lost in space, but don't tell me they're that great because they're not original. They, you know, they're not they're not something somebody thought up and said this is this is the new way to go with science fiction. And there's no new science fiction. There really isn't. I'm trying to think of it. I've been, I was trying to think of it all day long as I thought about talking about this tonight, and I, I really can't come up with it. And don't call me an old curmudgeon either. I'm just saying that I have not seen an original piece of science fiction in years. It's all hopping on the backs of stuff that's already been done, you know? And, and we keep remaking stuff, or we keep uh, doing this whole Marvel Universe thing, which is, it isn't even real, really sci-fi, it's uh, superheroes. Different, different genre, okay? One which I was never a big fan of when I was a kid, so. By the way, if you're listening tonight and you hear a little hum in the background, let me turn this up. Hear that? Okay. That's uh that's that's my uh my air conditioner. It's on for the first time this year, folks. It was 90 degrees today. I think maybe 91 degrees here in Manhattan. And uh I so I've got it on even though right now the temperature, well, it's 76. So, you know, I need it a little bit, but the uh the the weather will be changing again and going cooler again. So, uh you know, what the hell? Anyway, the lines are open now if people want to call and uh, join in on the citizen panel. If you don't know what a citizen panel is, you go over to gabnet.net. All the information is there on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, you, uh, it, it, on the right-hand side, it'll tell you how you call, what you use to call, what numbers to call, all of that. And it won't be a big mystery to you. And then you can join all the other people who have become lasting friends with each other as a result of this program. And we'll probably be friends long after this program is gone. So that's wonderful. 
Anyway, our, uh, our, our, and by the way, if you, uh, if you want to use the uh, phone, a regular telephone, instead of using Skype, you can do that, uh, but you have to do that via uh, the phone and a phone number, which is also at gabnet.net. Down on the bottom of the right-hand side of the page is a telephone number, and it's a telephone number I pay for every month. So be good and use it. Hey, look who's here. We haven't seen him in a couple of days. Uh, the uh, Oh, and he's got his hair back. In a, is that in a ponytail? Have you got it back? Uh, it's more of a man bun. Man, man bun? Because the other way you look like, uh, I don't know, like a Dutch Masters commercial. You know? It's not about the hair. It's not about the hair. What is it about, Scott? I don't know. I just, I just like to, I just want to tell you, I like to get in early so I can talk to you before I go silent. Oh, well, uh, you, you know, you don't have to remain silent. Well, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I know you're, 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 you're upset or you don't understand why people aren't calling in and whatnot. Because, you know, I'd call in, you know, if I get here on time and whatnot and listen. I listen to your whole rant on your sci-fi, too. I've been yeah. sitting here taking notes, even. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but I just, I just want, you know, I just want to say, I think you do better shows when there's not so many people there. Really? Really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You think you think it's better when they're well. Well, you know something. When uh, oh hi there, Vernon. Turn your uh, turn your phone or pad the other direction so we get you widescreen. In other words, turn it. Yeah, there we go. See there. Now we have you wide, and you you have the same perspective as as Scott. Um, uh, um, there's uh, the the uh, when we have a lot of people, and then we have a spirited discussion. It's good to have a lot of people. When you're yeah. just having casual conversation, yeah. it's better to have uh, just a handful of people. And that's that, and I like that. I, I thought your show last night was great with just the four of you guys. Uh, it was like you and Tom and 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 John and the actor. I can't remember. That, that I just Ray went, Renati. Ray Renati. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good show. It's, yeah. You know. You, so don't don't get upset that people don't call in. You do a great job, well, no matter what you're doing. It's also listenership too. But you know that I'm. Well, that's you me. know. That's true. You, you know. But, but uh, you know, I, uh, if um, you're, you're right. I mean, uh, after the show was over last night, I said that. But it's okay show. There's nothing wrong yeah. with the show. You know. Right. Uh, didn't talk too much about, uh, about the president, uh, you know, which is getting to be a dull right. subject anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, he gets enough attention. You don't need to give well, him attention. Here, to. here's the thing that, you know, um, I have stopped. I'm I really stopped watching these news networks on television today. Girlfriend was home because she was sick. She was still sick. She's still so, sick. Yeah, well, she's better now. But she had on she had on uh, MSNBC and and was watching it from one show to another. And every show, the first story at the top of the show was what Rudy um, Giuliani uh, and yeah. his whole thing about uh, uh, you know. And I'm going. You do this on every hour. It's like you, and the next host does the same thing that the host after him is going to do, that the host after him is going to do, and they will keep on that story until a fresh one comes into play. Right, right. And it, you was, go, it was boring, I agree. Yeah, and, and you start to go, this is a yawner, you know? Uh, and I, I'm tired of it. I mean, uh, let me know when the country is in a complete disarray and completely falling apart, you know, and I'll... Um, Kiss your ass goodbye. I'll just I'll, I'll kiss my ass good. Just tell me, call me and tell me when I'm supposed to kiss my ass goodbye. Okay, yeah. you know. In the meanwhile, why should I watch the destruction of America every hour on the hour in small little increments? Right? You know. Thank you know. I I know they're sitting there going, thank God this story just happened because we can get rid of that story. You know. But yeah. it would be nice if if one of those news networks would say. You know, there really isn't any major news this hour, so we're just going to go off the air and put a slide up. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? And we'll, a test and, pattern. Yeah, and we'll come back when there's something to tell you. You know? Um, I was told once by somebody uh, uh, when I was starting out in the business that um, I said, why, why is it that we do news on the hour? Because we always had a five-minute newscast on the hour. 
And I said, because every hour it's the same fucking news. Maybe it changes just a little bit. And he said, that's because people want to know that nothing new has happened. Yeah. That they, they want to know all is right with the world and that this is the way things were last hour and this is the way they are this hour, you know. Uh, so uh, so that, that's the, uh, well, I, I answered Phil Meyer's call. Oh, there, there he goes. Um, uh, you know, so time to go silent. Uh, no, no, no. You better not go silent, Boddicker. I'm going to keep dragging you into this conversation, kicking and screaming. <laughs> you know. What are you, what are you trying to look like with that hat, Rembrandt? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a Tony. It's a Tony special. Well, I know he sent me one like that too. I have one up here, but I'm not going to put. On. I I got a haircut today. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> you know, you didn't get your money's worth. I <laughs> my hairs uh, on the side. I said, he said, how do you want it? And it was so hot today. I, I walked for about uh, walked for about oh a half hour, forty five minutes around the neighborhood and stuff. And I, I wound up at the barber shop and I said, ah, I need a haircut because it's getting frizzy in the back and everything. And he said, how do you want it? I said, as short as you can make it. And I said, it's too hot out there to wear it in any length. So you know. So here I am, folks. I don't know. Is it look? Does it look like I'm bald? Completely bald? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's I've got stubble here. I've got a whole thing here. You but. Lollipop? Huh? Uh, you, uh, you're sporting that Telly Savalas look. I'm sport uh, sporting the Telly Savalas look. Oh, yeah. good. It looks like Mr. Clean. Mr. Yeah. Clean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, so <laughs> how'd you do at your photo thing last night, Phil? You know, there wasn't a lot of competition in my in my class. Uh, I got a first, but uh, you know, I, I really want them to move me up in uh, in, in competition. So uh, you know, I, I'm getting easy easy kills, and uh, I you know, I don't like participation trophies. <laughs> you know, I wanna I wanna you know, I get judged, and the guy you know yeah. gave me a first. Yeah. Uh, it was a reflection shot that I took of the of a bookstore. Um, uh, who, what was Ferlinghetti's bookstore called? Well, City uh, Lights City Bookshop. Lights. Yeah. So it was a City Lights bookshop window, mm -hmm. and it had the reflection of Broadway and all the strip clubs and things uh, in the reflection. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really it was well done. It was a good shot, but uh, and you know it got a first. So that means it goes off. It sounds like you, you could have gotten a first if you took a picture of a can of dog food with this competition. Kind of. In, you know, in, in my, you know, because they got me in a basic level. And it's like it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Well, maybe yeah. your photography is pretty basic. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if it was, why would I be always getting a first? You know? Well, because they're, because everybody else sucks. Well... Wait a minute! What, yeah. Wait a minute! What, what? 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 What were you doing? What, why were we getting a double picture on on Vernon? Did you do something? Uh, I have Vernon? no idea. Look at that! I have look at that! No idea. He's weird. What's going on? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> this is on my smartphone. This is the first time I've called in on my smartphone. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, it ain't that smart. <laughs> it ain't that. Well, smart. it's stereo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, hang on a sec. What? Oh. He's got to let my son in. Oh, he's got to let his son in. Okay, what have we got up there on his shelves? Let's see here. Is there anything interesting uh, that we that can... book's day. Huh? Looks like a plate. Uh, yeah. A broken plate. Like some, yeah, yeah, some uh, uh, art pieces of pottery. I don't know. I, I have bookcases, but they have books in them. <laughs> you know? DVDs. Oh, DVDs, DVDs like here. Yeah. This, yeah. this, this is, you know. But, uh, well, this is actually a piece of artwork. Huh? It's actually a piece of artwork that my wife bought. Oh, okay. Now I was just saying that I have bookcases, but they have books in them. You know, uh, I I don't see any books in there. Do you have books up there? Yeah. Uh, there are some books, but I mean, uh, there's there's also displays of different types. You know, some yeah. artwork and some knickknacks that she's gathered over yeah. the years. So I'm wearing shorts tonight, folks. See? Me too. Huh? Me yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, I have the Gabnet uniform on. Well, the Gabnet uniform, we're, we're, we're not into the flannel p pajama pants anymore because it's summer. Yeah. And you don't well, wear those. Those are too hot. What's your temperature there? 
Temperature today was 91. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're we're having some 50 degree weather out here. I, I yeah. Well, we're gonna we're going to be, go back down into the 60s or something next week or a couple of days. You know. So. Yeah. Well, it got warmer in the afternoon, but you know, eight nine o'clock in the morning, it's fifty degrees. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, listen, I want to uh, bring up something here, uh, and this, you know, this bothers me because you know how I've I've, I've felt about the Me Too thing, um, and this is this is the latest iteration of it. To begin with, we find that Charlie Rose now has twenty more twenty seven more accusers. Um, and uh, I would imagine he was a dirty dog. Okay, you know, I, he was Weinstein. But huh? he was he, he, no, you know, the, nobody's a Weinstein. Okay, yeah. uh, I mean, but Weinstein to this day denies anything. All right. So here, here's the big piece of news. Wait a minute, let me let me grab. Uh, where is it here? The big piece of news today is that um, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences uh, wants to, uh, or has, um, thrown Bill Cosby and Roman Polanski out of the Academy. Wow. Now, uh, I can see Bill Cosby. He was accused. He went to court. It was, he was found guilty. Okay, you can say you do not live up to the standards of our organization. Polanski, uh, I think, qualifies too for being thrown well, out. Well, he, he, he does, but you should have thrown him out 30 years ago, not today. You know, why did you wait 30 years to do it? Well, he didn't realize he was still a member. He hadn't paid his dues, What do you mean? I guess. Wait, he knew he was still a member. He won an Academy Award back in 2003 for Best Picture, for Best Director. Yeah. You know, okay. for the piano. Well, did he pay his dues? I mean, yeah, maybe he stopped I'm sure paying. he paid his dues and all of that. But the thing is that um, I, a lot of people are bothered by Polanski being thrown out. That, you know, if you were going to do it, then, you, you know, you're doing it to Cosby because Cosby just found, got found guilty. All right? But you're not, but Polanski is thrown out for something that went on. 30 years ago, and they say there were some other accusations against Polanski, but they were just accusations. They weren't, they didn't realize themselves in any court stuff or any uh, judicial hearings or whatever. They were just wasn't, accusations. Wasn't Polanski's thing consensual? At least that's, I think, what the woman said. N no, the 13-year-old. Uh, she was 13. Yeah. Okay. 13, yeah. Uh, you know, you got it. Uh, well, I, Frenchman. okay, uh, I, I've got to give... Polanski a bit of a pass. Here's why I'm going to give it to him. He had just come out of his wife being murdered by the Manson family. Okay? And I think that really fucked up his mind badly. And this happened in the wake of that. Uh, she was 13. It was wrong. Uh, he uh, gave her some quaaludes and champagne. Um... That was wrong. Uh, you don't do that to a minor. Uh, but he, uh, you know, he, I think he wound up pleading guilty, and they made a deal that he would only have to spend like a month in jail or something like that. And then it looked like the, um, the uh, uh, judge and the district attorney were going to pull renege on that deal, and that's when he jumped the country because he had already made it. He had already said, okay, I did it. Now let's give me a month or whatever you said you're going to give me. And then they reneged on that deal. And that's why he left the country. Uh, a lot of people believe that you know, it happened 30 years ago. Okay? And so to take away his, his membership in the academy now is, I think, a bit out of line. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the rest of the things against Polanski are just accusations. And it, here's where it... it uh, gets weird um, the, you know the only two other people who were ever uh, um, thrown out of the academy for their conduct well of course we know Harvey Weinstein yeah. they threw him out of the academy now they're throwing him out of the academy just on accusations 
not on any court proceeding, okay? If there was a court proceeding, and they, if, and uh, tell me if you think I'm wrong on this, if, if there was a court proceeding. Weinstein or, or Weinstein. Uh, Polanski talking Wein about the Weinstein, I'm talking about Weinstein. No. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. He uh, uh, has not been charged with anything. For he sure. has simply been accused. All the accusations he has refuted and said, I am not guilty of that. I did not do that. So it's a he said, she said at this point instead of a legal thing. So do you really throw the guy out of the academy? I mean, I know, look, you're not going to tell me Weinstein didn't do those things, okay? I, I think if anybody ever looked like he'd be guilty of that, it'd be Weinstein. But you're throwing him out of the academy and he hasn't been found guilty of anything? You're just going on accusations? I agree with you. You know? Um, what do you think, Scott? I, uh, I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, he did it. Like you said, he did it, but he hasn't been charged with anything. So right, right. Why can they do that? I, I don't know. It, well, it, it's it's. I, I guess it's kind of like a. Well, I don't want to say. And by that. by the way, it's amazing that they're throwing people out of the out of the academy now. When for years and years and years, all those big studio heads were doing this just ex exact exactly. kind of thing, you know. Um, yeah. We always talked about that Hollywood casting couch. So to go back and dip into your past 30 years ago is kind of, I, I, it's just something not right with that. And a lot of people in Hollywood feel that way. Do you know who the other guy was that, uh, that got, uh, no. got in trouble? Ben uh, I can't remember his name now. His name was, oh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he, um, this guy... Um, uh, got thrown out of the academy. He was the first one to get thrown out of the academy in the academy's history, and it was because he gave away uh, one of his screeners <laughs> that the academy sends out. So he was busted for screeners. Uh, but that's you know, that uh, that was the other big one, you know. What do you think, Patrick? You've been hearing what we've been talking about. Yeah, I it it. Uh, you know, I've had the same opinion even with Bill Cosby until he was convicted. Um, until you're convicted, you know, we're, we're not in a uh, Machiavellian society where you're guilty until proven innocent, you know what I mean? And I think even with Weinstein as, as depraved and deplorable with that, whatever he is, seem to be until you're convicted I don't know why they would bother right. I mean they can do it as soon as he would be convicted Bill Cosby yeah get rid of him you know he'd, he'd been convicted right uh, Roman Polanski you know I, I well, I, well it, it, it was 30 years ago why didn't you throw him out of the academy right. at that point Right, and, and then your last point before I came on, uh, you had said, you know, and, and the studio had to have been doing this shit for decades and decades. You know, why is it now that we're throwing people out? Yeah, that, that's a good good question, and why, t why today Roman Polanski on the same day as Bill Cosby? That's what really just kind of struck me as odd. He was on the same fucking day. Well, you know, here here is what I, what I have to ask. Also, is do we try to erase the legacy, the positive legacies of these people, the films they've made, the art that they've produced, uh, the good that they've done? I mean, Bill Cosby has done a lot of good. You know, I mean, he's 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 given away millions upon millions of his own dollars to scholarships and charities and you know he was considered really uh, that's why a lot of people didn't even go after him because he was supporting their you know their their philanthropies yes patrick well of course that's what we do because we're doing that now with historical figures presidents generals um everything that we've had throughout american history uh, General Sherman, who was a hero of the um, American Civil War, yeah. 
he was a ship fought toward the Native American yeah. under uh, General Grant when he was president. Yeah. But he had so much good that he did in defeating the South. Um, you know, and we've got presidents that are, I mean, even Abe Lincoln is being questioned as to whether or not, you know, he's as great as he is. So, yeah, everybody's going to question everything about a good legacy, and it's bullshit, you know. There was an old thing in a movie called, uh, I see your hand up there, uh, Phil, we'll go to you in a second, in a film called uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, and it's the last line in the movie. And you know the line I'm talking about, Scott? Oh, no, but if, uh, yeah, if, yeah. If, Jimmy Stewart if, and, yeah. and uh, John Wayne. It's the difference between, if it's the difference between the legend and the truth, print the legend. Yeah, that's right. You've yeah. said that before, you know. yeah. And so I think in, with Abe Lincoln, we probably printed the legend in a lot of cases, you know. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you could argue that these people who were southern generals and so on were traitors to the United States. They were, you know. Yeah, I didn't bring up southern generals. I was speaking northern. General Sherman was a northern general. Was he? Uh, I thought he was yeah. Confederacy. No, nope. he burned a Land, you know, oh, 150 okay, land. all right, all right, yeah, you're right. And Burn under the Smith, he, he did the whole Indian, um, and Grant did not do it. I forget who preceded Grant, but he had to continue um, moving in the Dakotas, and Sherman is the one that went out there and basically blasted yeah. the ship out of the Indian. So, I mean, there's a guy who was a hero in the Civil War. But following the Civil War, we're doing things that, yeah. you know, weren't yeah. necessarily that great. But what should he be remembered for? For both. You know, you don't erase one because he did another. I, I've never even heard of that, Patrick. I didn't know that he was such a, a genocidal maniac or whatever. Well, he, he, he had to enforce what was, uh, I forget what they called it, um, with the Dakota moving west, and he would he would the general he would essentially um, like the uh, chair of the Joint Chiefs, so he would have been the well, guy. I, I love the way they portray Custer. You know, his last stand up there on the hill, fighting off the Indians who are coming after his men. When in fact, the reason why those Indians wanted to kill him was because he was going around massacring Indians like crazy. This was just comeuppance. Yeah. And yet, they printed the legend. You know, they didn't print the... Uh, yes, yes, pa uh, Phil. Phil had his hand up and I forgot to go to him. Car Carmine Cardi, he was yeah. a godfather. Uh, he had something to do with the godfather, and he was the one who... And, uh, and it was simply for, for giving out one of his screeners. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Hello there, Ray Renati. How do you do? You been hearing what we've been talking about at all yet? Yeah, well, I, for a while there, and then, I, then my radio lost connection. But about uh, the Hollywood stuff. Yeah. Bill Cosby and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel yeah. about it? Oh, man. Well, first of all, it's been going on forever. And now, all of a sudden, we're talking about it again. Not that it makes it right, but, you know, the casting right. couch has never disappeared. I, I am glad that something's finally being done. I mean, the Bill Cosby thing, we heard about that, what, five years ago, I think. So, to me, I don't understand the big hullabaloo we already knew. Well, I mean, well, how do you feel about the Polanski part of this whole thing? Oh, man. You know, I mean, how... He's, how, got, he's how, gotten how, the law how, into how, yeah, well, how retroactive do we get on these things? That was forever you know? ago. What are they doing to him now? If you were the, if you were the Motion Picture Academy and you didn't care yeah. about it 30 years ago, why should you suddenly revisit it today and say we've had a change of heart? Fuck you. Didn't they keep yeah. kick him out of the country for 30 years already? Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't kick him out. He, he left. Yeah. Well, he stayed out because he, he didn't want to get arrested, right? Well, he's petitioned to come back in. but uh, And even, even the woman that he had sex with, the one that caused him the problems, has gone to the courts and said, I don't think he did anything terrible. I, 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 I forgive him, and you should too. And they, right. won't, and they won't do it. They won't, even they, though she was underage, wasn't it sort of... A, they said, we won't thing. visit the idea unless he comes back and gives himself up. 
Well, you know, I mean, then he puts himself in, in jeopardy that way. And you remember they tried to get him over there by getting, uh, who was it, France to extradite him. And France finally said to the United States, go fuck yourself. France will never do <laughs> or, that. Or it was, I think maybe it was Switzerland or whatever. France. Well, neither neither country will ever do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Living in Switzerland, he'd gone to Paris or France, and yeah. uh, uh, was it the Cannes Film Festival or yeah. something? They yeah. tried to grab. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we've been yeah. joined by Tim. we've been joined by Tim. Good evening, Tim. Good evening. Do you want to chime in on this subject matter? Or? Yeah, I was in a time warp, and I really had to think about it for a little bit. A little bit. We we were talking about whether the good art you put out or the good works you put out will erase some or all of your bad acts. Well, no, no, right? no, no. What we're saying is, do your bad acts erase the work you did? Right, but I, I think in, in, the, in the case of Polanski, it's the reverse. He's such a, a good artist and had such a body of good work out there that instead of just letting him, instead of hitting him at the time, they said, well, let's give him 30 years so he's kind of getting a partial punishment because we let him, you know, get slide for 30 years. Sounds so now like we're going to punish him. So he's getting, he's getting like a suspended sentence. Well, look, if we say that the crime happened 30 years ago and that the Academy uh, was forgiving for all that time and, and forgiving enough that they nominated him twice for an Academy Award in that time and gave it to him once, gave him a Best Director. Uh -huh. For, was he ever convicted, or is he a fugitive? You know, he was, yes, he was convicted. He, no, he actually, I don't think he convicted. I think he actually said, okay, I'm, pl I'm pleading guilty. And but better, the, but, but they broke the agreement. They so broke, they I broke, guess the yeah. question is, yeah. can you consider that if he, was, if he was convicted, I think the body, an organization can change their mind and say, we are now going to exclude people. Now that we know how pervasive the problem is, uh, it was just a one-off thing. Uh, well, let us slide. You made a mistake. But if everybody's making a mistake and everybody in the industry let this shit go on and not report it, no, nobody did anything about it, I think it's a comeuppance for the, uh, for, the, for the organization to say we all should have done better as an industry. And unfortunately, he's going to be a scapegoat. But that's what we've got to do because we've got to wipe the slate a little bit. Now, so I think it's partly that. I think it's reg regret for not fixing this problem a long time ago because the problem is not that the late sentencing the problem is the delayed fact that they didn't fix the root problem all these years so that's what should yeah. be i think we should emphasize on but i'll shut up now yeah. was was fatty arbuckle's works destroyed <laughs> yes. due to his accusation uh or just because you know uh, ju uh, just because okay i mean he was eventually found not guilty right okay uh, but did they destroy his film yes, because they took yes. the silver from him? Yeah, well, or, uh... well, well, no. What happened was, is that if you if you if you wanted to uh, uh, blow up, a, say, a truck or something, or have it catch yeah. on fire, you would just go find some old nitrate film, and that worked very well. All right, yeah. in order to do it, uh, and uh, so it got right after the whole Arbuckle thing, uh, people would say, "Hey, we need to blow up a truck. Go get some Arbuckle negatives." Yeah, so, nitrate is the N in TNT. Yeah, yeah, sort of. yeah. It, it's ex incredibly explosive, but mm -hmm. uh, it, something like ninety percent of his work was destroyed after that incident, and he was not guilty of it. He never worked. Yeah. He never worked as Fatty Arbuckle again. He did work as a director under the name Will Be Good, uh, <laughs> and uh, eventually he died. Uh, I think it very early 33 something like that of a heart attack and his wife said he really died of a broken heart he wasn't even at the saint francis hotel when virginia rappe how do i remember these names virginia rappe uh, uh was uh, supposedly you're getting killed paid, you're getting paid to remember alex yeah, yeah but it, virginia rappe um uh, uh, when that happened it, he wasn't even there. He was still in L.A. He was driving up to go to the party he told everybody to come to. And it took, th it took uh, three trials for him to be found not guilty. The other times they were all hung juries. And when he was finally found not guilty, the judge admonished everyone that this man has been done a great injustice. And you can't undo it, really. 
You well, can't undo apparently it. that's a perfect case of the you can't undo it. That's a perfect case of just like the Me Too thing, all that you needed was the accusation, and that was enough. Let me tell you another part of this story. What's the big legend about Fatty Arbuckle? Anybody know? Yeah, the Coke bottle. Tell, tell them. What's the, what's the legend? Well, uh, I guess they were. They asked. Uh, the, no, the, no, no! Don't don't say how it happened. What what happened was is it was the joke was always whenever you, you had a coke bottle and ah, Friday Arbuckle, huh? You know, well, yeah. it, that started because Vanessa interviewed a doctor and they said, well, how could she have died because she had a ruptured, uh, 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 not uterus vagina, something. uterus, yeah. And uh, he said, well, it could be with the insertion of something like, oh, I'll say a Coca-Cola bottle. Mm -hmm. And so they printed that. Now, he didn't say that's what happened. He just said they asked him how could it happen. And right. after I, that, the big I, joke. I, I, do, you, do you remember, Scott, growing up and hearing jokes about Coke bottles? Yeah. You know? You do, nope. Phil. I, yeah. Hey, my, my, I have a relative that used to work at a, a local hospital in Ohio. Yeah. And there was like motorcycle gangs around that used to hang out in our county, and there was she had stories of you wouldn't know some of the damage that was done, including coke bottles, rings, all kinds of stuff that happened to the women that hung out with. Yeah, them. but that, that's but, not yeah. the point I'm bringing up here. What I'm bringing up is the fact that there was a legend that lived after him that was absolutely erroneous. Right, and, and you never get rid of it. And, yeah. yeah, and and what's happening today is, you know. Uh, uh, it, today it comes out Charlie Rose. They, the big news item on the, the 630 News tonight, 27 more women have come forward and accused Charlie Rose. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do we report accusations? Is that in the best interest of everybody? Or do we, if, if people accuse and then they get a, an indictment, do you th then you report the indictment. Yeah. But do you, do you report accusations? Since when are accusations... You know, and they never used to. If the there news are, if there used are, to be terrified. Well, if there well, it, if there are twenty seven accusations, how many of those maybe are baseless? Maybe twenty seven. Yeah, you know, Alex, yeah. Or I, how I, many I, are true? Maybe twenty seven. But we don't maybe. know. And in the absence of that knowledge, yes, Ray. I remember whenever there were accusations in the news, what they did was they reported them as accusations and they really made it really clear that it was alleged, it was an accusation. Yeah. They, they, would, they, would, they would repeat that so many times and now they just say it as if it's true. Well, they and say, that, no, what they do is they say accused, but the word accused has become, it's almost like a silent word now that when they yeah. say it, it's just part of it, you expect the word accused. But the fact yeah. is alleged, They've alleged that's yeah. maybe maybe even a better term to use. And, and they used to emphasize the alleged, and they used to say it repeatedly. I mean, now they now they don't do that. Now well, now well, they just assume yeah. guilt. When I was, and, uh, you know what you, you know what you're describing, Alex. You know what you're describing. What is psych psych ops, which is what um, the, the the CIA officer said. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Mann says that Giuliani is if you repeat stuff enough. Yeah. It, you can't undo it. Just like these, when people get accused, so they're accused on all kinds of crazy stuff to the Clintons and everybody else, and you you do it enough, and it comes from enough. Well, you know, it, 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 you go back even worse than that. It's it goes back to Hitler and the big lie that if you say something well, enough times, eventually absolutely. it becomes it becomes truth. Uh, uh, and and, and, and it, it's a mob mentality. That's how that's how Trump well, got elected, well, well, and we have to have revenge. We got to find who did well, it. Let's revenge. not bring this all back to Trump because back, this is its, this, this, is, this is its own problem, and what it, no, no, it I know, but what, what it reminds me of what it reminds Tim, what it reminds Tim, me. What? Go this ahead. This is now a Trump free Trump free zone. No, it's, uh, no, it's not. Well, we'll be soon. Just, <laughs> uh, we're working on that, Phil. <laughs> Uh, it won't be a Trump free zone until there's no Trump, but tonight we're talking about other stuff, so we don't have to. No, I, no, I just, but it's the mom mentality no, but what, that we're living well, in now. Well, what it is, it, it's very reminiscent of something which I saw with my own two eyes, and that was the McCarthy era, the House Un American right, Activities absolutely. Subcommittee, in which people were simply accused and right. they lost their life, their, their living, their, you know. Uh, other terrible. other actors that you can cite were like Louis C.K. Uh, 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 what's his name uh, that was in uh, American Beauty? That uh, Stacy. 
Kevin Spacey. 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 You know, Spacey. and you know, maybe maybe they're guilty, but maybe you know. Well, maybe uh, then, then, then I think that, but I think that any penalty that we assess them should not mm -hmm. be done in lieu of the, the uh, uh, court case and him them being found guilty of something. And then you say, okay, you can't be a member of the academy. This is the court of right. public opinion. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm pretty Patrick, sure Kevin Spacey uh, has an alcohol problem, too, which is what happened. Uh, he's an alcoholic who gets ugly when he's well, drunk. You, yeah, there, there's something to be said here. Did you have something you wanted to say, Patrick? Because I noticed you had your <laughs> hand up there. Well, actually, I, um, what Ray was saying a little while ago with the, with the whole newscast that they, I mean, I remember hearing accused, or I should say uh, alleged or whatever, and it, it would emphasize that it was just an accusation and not, you know, and now, you know, like, like Ray said, it, it's almost as if the emphasis is on the word so that you forget what the meaning is and it automatically, oh, well, it, you're guilty, so... Um, you know, and, and and like with Kevin Spacey, there's another good one. Um, how did how did he not get kicked out today? But Roman Polanski. Did. It, it, well, uh, uh, because I think they use as their excuse in in their cases that they were both found guilty, or they both either pled guilty or were found guilty. But right. the thing was, the difference between the Polanski and the Bill Cosby is 30 years. If you really felt that way, why didn't you kick him out 30 years ago? You know, and if you didn't, then you say, hey, starting now. On the other hand, be the policy. if they're going to kick out Bill Cosby for a conviction, they should kick out Roman Polanski. No, but, it, but they're making the rule now. That rule wasn't in effect then. They weren't acting on that. In fact, they went so far as to give him an Academy Award for Best Director. Well, Long. Bill Cosby's uh, uh, problems uh, occurred, uh, some of them, 30 years no, ago. No, 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 no. There's only one case that we can even talk about, and that's the one he was found guilty of, which was recent. It was the only one they could get him on. Right. But that's, but the, oh, that's the only one That's the only one the Academy could, could, could cite. But the right. fact is that, yes, Roman Polanski was guilty or, or pled guilty uh, to the charge back then, but they had 30 years to make this decision, and they didn't make it at the time he was found guilty. They didn't make it a policy to let people go because they were found guilty of something. I guess now that now it is a policy. Well, I mean, and, I think uh, it, I think it's, I, I, I think it's grossly unfair, and I, I think it's a denial of the man's work. You know, does he have to get back his Oscar? I don't think so. No. Only if you have to give back your Emmys. Yeah, I, I won't give back my Emmys. <laughs> but, I mean, all, all I'm saying you know is... What the, yeah, 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 Tim. I, I believe this is also reminiscent of Japan. I think it's Japan where it their court system is more like you're guilty till proven innocent. They're, they sway a little bit more that way, other way, and they demand confession. Well, this is, a, this is just grossly unfair, okay? Well, absolutely. It Absolutely. is grossly unfair. I'm, I look, I'm all for throwing these guys out of the academy uh, if they're found guilty of something. But, I mean, waiting 30 years, come on, you're doing it because right now it makes you look good. You know, yeah. you're, not, you're not doing it because you're doing it for the sake of the, of the optics of the academy. Are there and any also, other? And also, also, when we go, again, why did they let, why they get, throw Weinstein out of the academy? He hasn't been found guilty of anything. He's denied all the charges. They didn't get rid of Spacey. Didn't throw him out. You know, they didn't throw out uh, Louis C.K., who I'm sure is a member of the Academy. They didn't, let, uh, they didn't throw out a lot of these people. But They had been convicted. No, but, but in the case of Weinstein, he hasn't been convicted of anything. Are there any? Uh, I am, yeah, but Weinstein seems to be the exception at the moment. Well, he shouldn't be the exception. He, no, I know. He, if, we're, if we're going to be fair, you know, if we're going to be fair to begin with, let's let's have a uh, uh, a date at which you can't Weinstein. retroactively go back and throw somebody out. Weinstein was thrown out of the Directors Guild as well, wasn't he? Who was Weinstein thrown out of the Directors he, he, Guild? Producers Guild. Producers Guild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, they have different rules than the actors kill, probably. But I think that I think his company, Weinstein Company, I think the upper 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 management shared information with the Academy or the Guild. 
No, but it doesn't. You know, it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, what are you using as your criteria for throwing these people out? Now, if you say starting today, anybody who's a, who who is found guilty of these crimes will be let uh, will be thrown out of the academy, then okay, I guess you could say Cosby comes under that. All right. But if you, you know, say as of today we're going to throw out somebody who, who committed a crime 30 years ago, yeah, I'm sorry. You know. You of any other actors that have been convicted of a crime that uh, haven't been thrown out? I, now, did Robert Blake get convicted? Uh, no, or no, 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 he didn't. So, no, but they didn't throw him out because he was accused of murder. That's true. Why was he in jail for so long? Uh, yeah, he he shot his chauffeur or something like that. Oh, okay. Oh, oh no, he, he shot his girlfriend and. Yeah, I thought he was convicted. No. Well, no. Or was, I think somebody shot his girlfriend. And it was claimed that he hired them to do it. If I remember correctly, he went back into the restaurant and he had a gun on him, and the girlfriend ended up dead. And you know, uh, I, yeah. I know I saw him interviewed in jail. So yeah, I assume he, something happened to him. Oh, so he spent some time in jail, but oh yeah, convicted. Okay. Uh, uh, was there I, anyone else that comes to mind that? I mean, have, uh, here's, a, here's a good example of, you know, okay, Robert Blake, all right, uh, accused of ki killing his girlfriend. He, his whole career was virched. I don't think he has worked since then, to my knowledge. Um, do we stop showing our gang comedies because he's in them? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? He had, he had my favorite statement. If you don't do the crime, if you don't have, do, if you don't, if you don't can't do it. Yeah, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Oh, that was on Beretta. Don't do it was the yeah. song, and that was Sammy Davis uh, who wrote that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, matter of fact, he performed it as well. Yeah. Uh, was it, you don't, don't do the crime unless you got the dime? The no, if you, can't, if you can't do the time. Yeah. Don't no, no, do I'm the crime joking. if you can't it's do the time. It's all about the money. Uh, I, I think the, Polans well. the Polanski thing is ridiculous. I mean... Uh, that was a one-off thing, right? Well, uh, Thirty years uh, ago, too. Yeah, and it was wasn't it more than thir I don't know. It seems uh, like I, it I'm, I'm I'm uh, I'm. It was like forty years ago. I, maybe, I, but anyway, well, let me see here. Hold um, on. you know, it, he was still getting over the death of Sharon Tate, too. I mean, the guy was kind Nin of a 19, mess. Nineteen nineteen seventy-eight. How many years is that? Oh, that's a long. Uh, Jesus, that's uh, forty. Is that forty? Forty. Forty. Uh, 40 years? Okay. 40. Okay, I correct myself. It's 40 years instead of 30. Yeah. Even even more so. Why haven't you done anything about it in 40 years? Jesus. You know? Yes, Patrick. Did Phil, did Phil Spector get kicked out of anything? Uh, no. He, was, he, he got kicked into a jail, though. It's, he wasn't right. in the Actors Guild, though. He was no, no, I don't mean actor, but probably music. I don't know. Yeah. I, you know. I don't think they took back his gold records or anything. Yes, Patrick. What about, like, uh, Robert Wagner uh, with Natalie Wood. I mean, that he was never convicted. He was accused, and they're still trying to yeah. come up with that. Even the last several weeks, they, they brought that up. Um, so there's another one that he's getting dogged by something from the past that can't well, be proven. It, it, well, it, it can't be proven, but on the other hand, you can't prove it didn't happen. You know, right. I mean, in other words, they, it, they, it, it, they, as, uh, as as the years go by, evidence disappears. And so conjecture is the only thing that reigns supreme. Uh, well, you know. Didn't witness say that the mouse fell into a bucket of milk? And uh, uh, the witness was, what's his name, the actor? Uh, oh. the, the one who does all those weird... Uh, because you can't go to... Harvey uh, Keitel? Yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, what's this? Dirt? No. Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, I just said it. Starts with a W, right? Uh, Christopher Walken. Yeah, Christopher Walken. Walken. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, uh, yeah. He, 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 what is my old friend uh, used to say that, who does impressions, that he, he takes, uh, how you do an impression of, Walken is you take any word that's a single syllable word and turn it into a two syllable word, like the the word when would be when. Yeah. <laughs> when I go. Kevin Pollack told me that. Yeah. yeah. When. Uh, but uh, Kevin Pollack. Kevin Pollack is the best William Shatner ever. 
He did the William Shatner that sent, set set the uh, uh, the bar for doing William yeah. Shatner. He, In other words, everybody best. who does yeah. William Shatner is doing Kevin Pollack doing William Shatner. <laughs> Kevin Pollack did the best uh, Falk, Peter Falk. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was a great yeah. Peter Falk. Yeah, he was great. Of course, I met the guy who did the best Peter Falk. Peter Falk. Peter Falk. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a good interview. I was I was awed by him. God, was I awed by him. You know, I liked your Peter Falk interview. Oh, yeah, no, he was, yeah, we, we, loved, we loved each other. We really yeah. had a bromance there during the interview. It was <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> like, you know more about me than I know about myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever interview Bill Clinton? No. No. But well, he, I've seen him in some rallies. Monica Lewinsky's father. Monica, Lew I, I work for Monica Lewinsky's father, or stepfather. Right. He's, he's, ex he's extremely charismatic. Who? At least back then he was. Clinton. Oh, Clinton, oh, very charismatic. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could look at thousands of people in Pontiac, Michigan, and it was like everybody was in black and white except he was in color. That's what it was well, like. Well, they, they said about uh, anybody I know that knew Clinton said that the thing about him was he would seduce anybody who was near him. Whether it was yeah, a man right. or a woman, he had this very seductive quality. He did. I met him. He was totally like that. Yeah. I and, remember. And, 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 yeah. I, and I, Chelsea I, is the same way. Really? I met, I, I met Chelsea, too. She was standing next to me at Starbucks, totally seductive. Really? Uh, yeah, when, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. She went to school near you. Yeah, when, uh, when Clinton was campaigning against Bush... He um, uh, he did something different than than anyone else. They would have these town hall meetings, and Bush would be sitting there on the stage, and he wouldn't move. But Clinton would get up and walk into the audience, and and just uh, take questions and, and and talk with people one on one. He was yeah. very uh, he was charming, and uh, uh, really good at connecting. You know? you know what's interesting about Clinton is, is that when he was president. A lot of us felt he was a terrific president, you know. In uh, the second term. He had a fairly high IQ, not extremely Yeah, but, high, we, but, but we, pretty, we felt he was a good president. But in retrospect, he was really a terrible president. The well, he stuff, moved to the it, center. It, well, and well, no, 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 that has nothing to do with it. What it has to do with is that the only way you're ever going to judge how good or bad a president was was years later when you see the results of what they did. And he made a lot of big mistakes. I mean, the way radio is today is terrible, but it's because of Bill Clinton and his deregulation of broadcasting. Uh, uh, the NAFTA, terrible yeah. idea, terrible idea. Uh, you know, uh, really, n I, I have to think of what was it that Bill Clinton did that was terrific. And most of it, he used, as you say, uh, towards the center. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and when you go to the center... Uh, you really don't do much of anything, except I'm pacifying. not sure you can blame NAFTA on Bill Clinton, though. Why, well, why yeah, not? Can. Why not? No, Bill Clinton signed the law, but he was also facing he was also facing a veto override if he didn't sign the law by Congress. Really? I didn't remember it yes. that way. I think I so. I I think that's right. This was this was actually started under George H. W. Bush, and he could not get it passed. But then the Congress came along, Bill Clinton was elected, and Congress passed it and put it on Bill Clinton's desk and said, sign this or we're going to override your veto anyway. You know, that's very true. George H.W. Bush was pushing for NAFTA because when Perot ran against him, Perot ran against him based on the fact that he didn't want NAFTA. So, so the thing right, is... He was talking about that giant sucking okay. sound. Scott? So, so why didn't he just say, I'm not signing it, let him override it? That's what he should have done. Then it wouldn't have been on him. You know, he should have vetoed yeah. it. But he, he was he, he got along with people. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: there are certain parts of NAFTA that Clinton agreed with, and part of it was that the economy in Mexico was horrible, and NAFTA was supposed to help out Mexico so that there wouldn't be all this subsidizing that the United States was going to try to have to pay Mexico and that sort of thing to help support Mexico. Uh, and, and NAFTA helped prevent them having to do that. Hmm. Well, now uh, we, but yeah, now well, we got to spend money on a wall. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
Well, you know, uh, I, I uh, look, give Trump anything he wants. That's what I say. It, it's, have him just leave our news cycle alone, okay? I'm so right. tired of him. We want, I, want, I, want, I want to be able to turn off the news. I'm weary. I mean, I'm really weary now. Yes, uh, Patrick. Um, at, at some point last night in my half sleep and, and not listening to your show, yeah. I fell asleep in my wheelchair. Um, I heard you say something to the effect of with, uh, with regard to Trump, and it really is the media's fault that they are giving him all of the airtime. Every tweet that he sends out, they put on the air. Uh, and, they, and they show it as screenshots or, or, you know, they, re, they read it. And, you know, it's their own damn fault. And, you know, and, and it, it's funny because they're almost like an abused wife. They... They keep bitching about him and bitching about him and bitching about him, but yet they keep going back to the well for more that anything he does. Well, I, I, well, uh, I, 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 keep, I keep talking about the relationship between he and and the press is a dysfunctional relationship. It is like a bat, it's a battered wife syndrome. It's like how much does he have to beat up the press and they still go, oh well, I mean, I can change him. <laughs> you know, what I can't I, figure out is why Twitter doesn't just cut off uh, Trump's account. They're a private company. They are not a utility. <laughs> Who has no right to have a Twitter account? Donald I, Trump I, I, does I, not have a right to have a Twitter account. Nobody, nobody has a right nobody. to have a Twitter account. Well, I don't, I'm whether I'm surprised, exactly. I'm surprised Bezos hasn't bought Twitter and cut him off. Yeah, that, uh, that would be a good move for Bezos. Well, I'm He's sure. So I'm sure he doesn't have a free Echo in his office. Yes, Patrick. Well, even better than cutting him off at Twitter, let him have Twitter, but don't report it on the news because there's, right. there's going to be less coverage. You know, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Okay, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. What, what I put yeah. on, whatever he did today, you know, like in the morning, I'll, I'll put on the television just to see what's going on and it, what he fucking tweeted. I don't give a shit. You know, well, I, I'll tell you what's worse. Today, they had a uh, thing in the Rose Garden. It was uh, Religious Day or whatever it is. I can't remember what National they, Day of Prayer. National Day. Day of Prayer. National Day of Prayer. And so we held this thing in the in in the Rose Garden, and the fucking news outfits. He's going to give a speech, so they f they you know put him on to giving the speech. Why? Why? It's it, it's it's just a rose garden event in which he's massaging the the uh, the clerics and so on, you know, and um, it, why waste our time with that? You know, what's happening in uh, what's happening in Syria today? What's happening in uh, Ch uh, how's China's economy doing? You know, give me give me some news that 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 I can chew on a little bit, not this constant cartoon that's coming out of Washington. Yes, Patrick. I think the reason that, that everything, and including his rallies and, and whatever are covered, in the media, much like we just said, battered wife syndrome, they're hoping to catch him saying something stupid so that then that can run throughout the news cycle. And, you know, the thing is, just it, they're jerking themselves off and then they're bitching about it at the same time. And it, like you said, the National Day of Prayer. Who gives a shit? What, why did they need to, to air? What I, thought, what I thought was very funny, though, was in the middle of, uh, right after he finished his whole speech and everything, on the Day of Prayer, with all these clerics standing around, somebody from the crowd goes, do you have a comment on the Stormy Daniels case? <laughs> <laughs> who, who's going who's gonna to win, uh, Paul Ryan? Or the Jesuit priest. Yeah, the, he's not. He's not going to resign. I know. Yeah, that's Ryan's another, that's, not resigning. That's another story altogether. No, no, no well, it, he's it, resigning. But the the the, uh, oh. the congressional chaplain, uh, yeah, who see. is a uh, Catholic priest. He gave he gave a prayer just before the uh, uh, the vote for the tax bill, 
And in the prayer, he said something to the effect of, and let's make sure that what we do here is good for everybody, not just businessmen, you know, it should affect and be good for everyone. And so Ryan then fired him. Didn't oh, like wow. that. Didn't like him getting political. Oh, my God. You know, so uh, today uh, the uh, chaplain said, I've decided I'm not going to resign. You know, uh, I'm just going to stay here. and You're going to have to throw me out. And Ryan He's said, up. I guess he can stay. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, um, I, I, when we, we talk about the dysfunction with the press and so on, it's interesting to me that when Rudy Giuliani had to go on the air and sp I guess he was spinning for the president. I don't know why they did this change of heart to go tell the story about how the president paid, uh, uh, what's his name, Cohn, the 31000 was it, or $32,000? Or how much was it? 130000 He repaid the 130000 that, that, yeah. that, that um, Giuliani went on Fox to say that Trump had repaid the 130000 Yeah. And then he stuck smart. around after Hannity and he went on Ingram's show and did it. And then he was up the next morning at the crack of dawn to be on with those two guys and the crack of dawn uh, on uh, Fox and Friends. And that they did all of this at Fox because they knew if they went anywhere else, somebody would ask him questions, you know, that were embarrassing. It's a very smart move. On how, how was it a smart move? Uh, well, there's uh, a crime if uh, if there was a donate if there was uh, money. Hey, Phil, paid. I know what you're going to say. You're wrong. Oh, you're you spending it wrong. Campaign money. Campaign but money. If you, it's in kind donation. Whoever, uh, if, if Trump's money went in to pay the hundred thirty thousand, he has to report it. Well, so what, yeah, you know what you're doing. You're listening. Wait a minute, Phil. Phil, hold on a second. Phil, you're listening to Giuliani's explanation. Let's remember in this discussion that Giuliani is a terrible lawyer. He's had a stroke too, I think. When I saw the interview, I just felt that Giuliani made a mistake. It just looks like he screwed up and said uh, something. I think he, said. I think he went for the lesser of two evils. That you know, having Donald Trump liked it. Donald mm -hmm. Trump liked what Giuliani said on Fox. Yeah, well, I, yeah, but I, but the but the problem here is how how the optics and how Trump now looks as a result of that revelation. Yeah, but that's not the one that's going to put him in jail if uh, he paid a, it's he a felony. Back. Misreporting your donation. He's not going to jail, because but he might, he, 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 might, he might not make just, it to the end of his presidency. It, yes, Patrick. It was just a business dealing. It, the thing no. Is, Thing what Giuliani did was fine by just going on Fox because all the other network can only report what he said on Fox. Right. That's it. That 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 the that the fight that they can use. I they mean, he could, he couldn't go over to MSNBC after he said what he said on Fox and say it in MSNBC without being taken to the woodshed. But, uh, right. You know, anywhere. Meanwhile, with Hannity, he has a fawning uh, acolyte. Uh, who is oh. going to go, oh, tell me more, tell me more. And then with Ingram, the same thing. And Fox and Friends in the Morning, those two, those three people are morons. But in, there's nobody there. He's not going anywhere where his opinion was going to be challenged. The, uh, yes, Ray. Uh, I'm confused here. So Trump said that he knew nothing about this $130,000. Giuliani goes on and says, oh, no, Trump paid back the $130,000, which... Completely contradicts yeah, well, what Trump said. Then, then they're also, then they're also, they're also backing off. So how off. is this a yeah. good thing? They're backing off. They're backing off on it and saying he only knew about it two weeks ago. That's oh, right. But really, he yeah, didn't. He didn't know that one hundred and thirty thousand dollars came out of his pocket to go into Cohn's pocket uh, because he only found. I mean, how do you just not find out about it two weeks ago if That's it's your money? Yes, That's why I'm saying I yes, think Giuliani just screwed up. Yes. He screwed up, and then now he's backtracking and trying to fix his big mistake. You know what they were trying? They were trying to prevent Cohen from flipping. They're trying to save Cohen because they threw him under the bus. But in, in New York State, it's illegal to take actions like that and not immediately notify your client. Okay. Uh, Patrick, so he broke the law or he broke the ethics and should be disbarred. Patrick has Cohen. his hand up. Patrick? 
Yeah, I mean, the legal term, I think that they, that for what Giuliani did was clusterfuck. And that's just <laughs> what I hear. I mean, Is that a legal term? <laughs> a legal term. <laughs> He, he also talked about Your Honor? secret negotiations with North Korea, and he doesn't have a security clearance. Hmm. But he's buddy buddy with Trump. Trump will just tell anybody anything. He does not have the security clearance to talk about getting those uh, prisoners out of North Korea. Did you see what uh, what Condoleezza Rice said today um, about about North the whole Trump. North Korea thing? that Trump should be very, very careful because they've done this before where they've said they were going to denuclearize and they said they did, but they didn't. Yeah, that's what he's planning to do. He's just the stall tactic. The Iranians said the same thing. Well, uh, the Iranians, yeah, the though, did. No, the Iranians have been, have been allowed to go into uh, people, the uh, inspectors, on-site inspectors, have been allowed to go into every place that they want to go to see if there is, are nuclear plants or whatever, and uh, the inspections into Iran have never been called into question. They con they're considered don't, to be... Don't react to this word, but Netanyahu said... Well, who gives a shit about see, fucking Netanyahu? Netanyahu's a moron. That hey, fucking don't idiot. Don't react. <laughs> he, he was Yahoo. doing a PowerPoint from the only The only Netanyahu I ever knew is when Netscape tried to merge with Yahoo. <laughs> and they wanted him to call themselves Netanyahu. Thank you very much, folks. I'll be here all week. Tip the waitresses. I like to call him Net. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know. I, mean, I like to call him Yahoo. You know, I mean. Uh, uh, we should get together. <laughs> I just think I just think that the news has become so boring, so unrelentingly boring, uh, because it, it, it's so predictable. I mean, you go here, you're going to get this. You go here, you're going to get that. And so. Is the is is uh, a Phil Meyer going to go watch MSNBC all day to hear the opposite opinion? No, he's going to go over to Fox, where people are going to tell him what he wants to hear. And am I going to go over to Fox? I do f every now and then because I run a show here and I want to see what they're saying. But basically, I'm I'm at MSNBC most of the time. Sometimes to a lesser extent, CNN. What were you going, uh, uh, Scott? How about you? What do you do? Do you watch any of these things? I was going to say some other news out there right now. Yeah, the NRA is going to be in Dallas this mm. weekend. Yeah, and Trump's coming in tomorrow. Yeah, and and we're we're going to try to convince him to drive to the uh, convention center in an open uh, let me see. Yeah, go by, and go, go by the Texas yeah. School Book Depository. Yeah, yeah, he won't yeah. go near anything that has books in it. <laughs> That's right. Dang, you ruined the plan. Oh, right. Well, tell him it's DVDs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> of Fox, of Fox and Friends. Yeah, we got a whole building full of DVDs of Fox and Friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Ray. Uh, when uh, Kim Jong, whatever his name is, Un. Uh, Un. yeah, Un. Un. Just, Un. a week Un. or two before. There was a report in the news where their nuclear facility uh, had some kind of meltdown or something. Um, and where they did and the test. Where they did their test. Yeah, right. so I think that he's just using this, since they have no capability at the moment, to just kind of mess to around. With the, yeah, they so now rebuild. he's going to make it look like they're, they're clean and everything because, you know, they're not doing anything now. And, and then as soon as they rebuild it... He's going to yeah. get a bunch of money during this negotiation thing. Yeah, yeah. He wants the, he wants the, some people wants, out there to like him. So well, he's going know, to get some dough. The trade it, opened it, up because he and his elite people that live like kings are running short of money. Well, well, here, exactly. yeah, well here, here's, exactly. here's my big question. Do we even know he had a creditable nuclear program? Or did he give it the optics of having a nuclear program so eventually he could get to this point where he was going to get some payoff on this whole deal? No, he did. They have ways of telling if somebody set off a nuclear they, they explosion. Can tell they know caused by the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they have instruments. Seismic wave. They have instruments that can tell hey, that you nuclear. guys all mispronounce nuclear. Nuclear. Uh, yeah. Nuclear. 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 We're mispronouncing it, Phil. It's a it's conspiracy to change the word. Nuclear. You know what I think? I, what Kim is doing is... Nuclear is like W said. 
you right now. <laughs> you know what the Chinese are doing this whole time, don't you? While we're distracted with little Kim Jong Un, they're building man-made islands all over the South China Sea, and have pretty much militarily ext- extended their territorial waters out a thousand miles almost. Who is this? I heard that China. They're China. China. Uh, China has been building artificial islands. Yeah, I heard about and, that. And putting military staff, and you know, they're patrolling the waters like they own the ocean out. Hundreds of miles. They now. don't. They don't feel China's big enough. <laughs> you know, well, they they want to win the war. They know they're going to have to be powerful to yeah. win. I mean, they're trying to extend their influence. You know, we have an amazing country in the United States because of the the size of our country. We have this wide range of uh, of, of, uh, of climates, uh, of climates right. and and topography and so on. But the Absolutely. only one that almost makes us pale by comparison is china i mean the, the 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 size of china is just unbelievable what's the population of china uh 1.2 uh, billion 1.23 billion something like that yeah yeah we have 400 400 million 300 350 million. 350 million yeah i, did, did I went anybody to, I watch went, the russian olympics yeah they did remotes. The newscasters did remotes. All out Russia is huge too, and like a lot of these places were like a they were a century behind us, centuries, a century or more behind us, and that's the way China was. But well, they're modernized almost now. Well, but you're talking use an ox to plow your fields. Still well, when places. I was in China, uh, I went to Gulin and. Uh, oh, me too. Oh, I, 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 yeah, is that what? Did you go down the Li River? Yeah, isn't that in a little tiny boat with a yeah. bicycle? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> isn't that amazing? Yeah, those, those casks. I mean, it's just incredible. It's it's almost Shangri La in its own weird way. Yep. But uh, what I found is we then went to the rice paddies, and on the way, I look out in the fields, and there are guys doing, uh, you know, agricultural work using centuries-old uh, implements. Yeah, words, probably. Huh? No matter where you are in no, China, actually, it looks like you're in the middle of nowhere. You look out there, you look out and you see people. You see people out there. There's people everywhere. You yeah. could be in the middle of nowhere. There's people but, doing, you know, doing agriculture. Well, or they were using like an old, a really old implements. In fact, they were using yeah. giant chopsticks to uh, <laughs> dig up to the earth. Dig. Yeah. yeah. What was it Seinfeld said? If they thought the chopsticks were such a good idea, why do they still use a shovel? When they're digging up dirt. <laughs> they still drink water out of faucets instead of bottles. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, China, to me, I was very impressed by it as a country. The people are wonderful. Did you go to, did you go to Hong Kong? No, no. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, might... I went before it became China. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I can go to Hong Kong any year the girlfriend goes there, but I haven't gone with her on those trips. I went to you the one. Go next time. Hmm? Go. Oh, broadcast from over there for us. No, I can't. Oh, oh, you can't. That's right. Get an Alibaba account. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't huh? matter. Uh, you know, if um, uh, I remember when I went over, when I was going to go over with her to Beijing, uh, I uh, asked the station if they would pay for us to do broadcasting from Beijing, and they said sure. Uh, serious. So um, we then asked, you know, if we could or couldn't, and they weren't going to give me a visa because I was a broadcaster. So I had to re-put my visa in saying I was just a businessman and that we just dropped the whole idea of doing a broadcast from Beijing. Uh, it, 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 if I tried to do it, I, you know, I could have gotten on my computer and probably I couldn't, can't get Facebook there. And I don't think you can get Skype. YouTube there. Huh? Can you get Skype? No, I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I did use Skype. I used Skype to call a friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, what now, when, you're, uh, when your wife called you and was on the show from uh, China, what was she using? Uh, I think she was using FaceTime. I think. Um, but I can't remember exactly. Did I have her picture on the air? I'm not sure. Because if I, I did, then so. it was Skype she was using. But I remember I called I used Skype from Gulin, and I called my friend uh, Steve from the Gulin Hilton or wherever we were. And um, so I could use Skype over there. 
But mm. if I tried to do this, uh, they'd probably knock on my door to the room and shut me down, you know. Because, I, you know, you have to get permission for that kind of thing. I mean, broadcasters can broadcast from Beijing, but you have to jump through hoops to do it, you know. So, and I was on vacation, so I, I cared more. You didn't more have about, enough money for the bribe, did you, Alex? No, I cared more about the vacation than I did about, you know. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. You know, that I didn't want to screw up the, a wonderful vacation. And, yeah, that's uh, a good idea. Yeah, but, uh, um, you know, I mean, China is, I think... You know, we have to we 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 we're going to have to deal with them, and we're going to have to deal with them as a, as a major force in this world. And by the way, with one we don't pay much attention to, but is just as big a force as China now is India. Mm -hmm. You know, India is a gigantic economy. Probably both those economies, in many ways, are better than ours. Uh, and uh, these are two absolute giants, uh, and they're going to be more. You know. I had a 13-hour layover and in Incheon, so I took the bus up to Seoul, and that's that uh, in Korea. That's a very, uh, it's modern. Uh, you know, I was looking. Oh, yeah. for What'd you goat, think? Oh. What'd you think? Huh? You, you, if you go to Beijing, yeah, you will see a city that's bigger and gi more gigantic than you ever thought New York was. I mean, the buildings are huge. And not well, not just in height, forget height, in in footprint, they're absolutely huge, and that's all within the last twenty years. Those well, Manhattan's been built. what twenty four square miles. Yeah. yeah. So there's only you know so much you can do, so much you can build. In China, uh, it's it's a pretty big you, place. You know what's interesting here in New York though is uh, the um, the what do you call it? the um, uh, the skyscrapers? You know the, the the way the Manhattan looks has completely changed from the way it was when I was first here years ago, back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I mean, it right. has changed where it looks like a different city. I mean, the buildings it's that like are prominent, it, it looks like the city of the future that I used to dream of, you know. We've got these yeah. tall, pencil-thin buildings, and, you know, they're all lit up in various colors and so on. The kind of thing, you, it was a thing of science fiction at one point. Have you seen the San Francisco? Getting close to Blade, getting close to Blade Runner. Yeah, he is getting close to Blade Runner. Yeah, I have seen the San Francisco skyline and how much it's changed in the last since Feinstein was uh, mayor. Prior to Feinstein, the build there were no skyscrapers. Well, because well, we have that big Salesforce uh, dot com building now. That thing's incredible. This yeah, the Leaning that, Tower. It, it's not <laughs> leaning, is it? Yeah, there's one building that's. Been, uh, it that's it was. Building. They fixed it, and then there's another one that's leaning. Yeah. Here's here's, uh, here's what happened. San Francisco was very uh, of, of a want not to build tall buildings because of earthquakes. And that you, if you had a building, so they made a law that no building could be taller than 20 stories. Another reason for it was the hills are beautiful in San Francisco. And if you had all these skyscrapers, they'd obliterate the hills and the view of the hills. And somehow that law went out the window, and now you've got, what, 50, 60, 70-story buildings in San Francisco? Well, I think the first one might have been the Bank of America uh, building on California, which might have been uh, the tallest. But do you know until so the, the tallest building in San Francisco, I remember, was on Sutter Street. And what about the Transamerica building? Well, uh, Transamerica uh, building. building yeah. The Transamerica Tower was probably the tallest building. The tallest business building up to that point was on Montgomery Street. That was what it was. And I'm trying to remember if it was the Rust Building. Does that sound familiar? Uh, I thought the Rust Building was a real old building from, uh, and I, I thought it was on Market. But Well, no, the, uh, the Rust Building may have been the building I went into where all the, every, the whole building was nothing but doctors and dentists. I think yeah, they had yeah. hot and cold running, uh, uh, uh uh, uh, nitrous oxide, you know, you just plug into you know, the wall. <laughs> in 1865, the tallest building west of, of the Mississippi was the uh, ferry building in San Francisco. Really? Yeah, with yeah. the clock tower. Wow. That was, yeah, the tallest west of the Mississippi. Do you there's remember? A, there's that? a video you can see uh, two weeks before the t 1906 earthquake, and uh, and you see you see the the ferry building at the end of Market Street. And right. it looks exactly like it does now, and and all the buildings that burned down are are still but there. But if I showed you, if I showed you, if I showed you that same shot, 
Yeah. In uh, 19, uh, when, when was the Loma Prieta quake? 1989? Prior, yes, 1989. Prior to 1989, if I had shown you that shot, you would not be able to see the ferry building because they had built freeways in front of it. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. And the good thing about the Loma Prieta quake is it leveled those freeways, and they, they all had to come down. down never and now you have that clear shot to see them again. Right. Jerry Brown uh, stopped building those freeways. Those were supposed to go around to the marina. Yeah. And uh, yep. they they stopped it, and they were just sitting there in midair for I don't know how many years uh, because he, he he stopped the funding. Yeah, you literally could drive off them or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you could get up there. Hey, yeah. I sent you a video of New York in. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, very good. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, what year was it? 1911 or 1904? 1911, or like I think. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was. It was. They did something with the speed of the film to make it look perfect. Well, they, what they did is is that most of those films were shot at 18 frames a second. Mm -hmm. And the trouble is, when they show them today, they show them on projectors that have 24 frames per second, and that's why everything always looks sped up. So if you bring it back to the 18 frames per second, you then get natural flowing motion. Uh, nice. But there was another video that Shecky sent me of San Francisco that I found amazing, and it was a, about a subway line that no, uh, not, uh, not, excuse me, cable car line that no longer exists. There was a. Is that the, one that went to the Cliff House? Yes, I think so. Okay. And, yeah, the, it fell down. And, and what they uh, were were they were two sections of cable car. The front part is what is the front part of the cable cars now, and the back part is what's the back part of the cable cars. But they were hooked together by you know by a by a, a what do you coupling. call it? A coupling, yeah. yeah. And hey, and it you guys want to have a spinning contest? What? Uh, New York City is the 16th largest metro area. San Francisco Metro is the 95th. That makes sense. There's a million five, people. Five, but, but, five million in San Francisco area. By the way, uh, Ray, uh, your p video stopped. So Mine did? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'll, okay, I'll go off and back on. I don't know. Turn your camera uh, on, yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's weird. Why oh, that keeps happening? Okay. Okay. Just, you know, just, yeah. just click on camera and it should. But San Francisco yeah, is the fifth largest radio market in the country, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, San Francisco? Yeah, I thought so. No, it's the fourth. Uh, it's been a while. It's the fourth. Fourth. Is it working now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's the fourth market. Now, I think I when I was there, it was the fifth, and I think it became the fourth while I was there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you, you know what the largest metro area is? Uh, L.A.? South no, America. No, I'll somewhere. tell you. You mean in, in land size? No, in population in the it's, metro area. Oh, somewhere in South America. Because you know it's the largest uh, land size city is in the United States. Uh, Which one? Miami or Houston? Fremont. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Houston uh, second. I thought it was L.A. Nope. Los Angeles. Nope. Now Miami's like a hundred miles across. Oklahoma City. Really? Yeah. Kidding. Yeah. In land size. Mm -hmm. so the largest population is Tokyo. There's 38 million compared to 20 million in New York City. Yeah. Any million New York City? When I was there, there was ten. Let me let me tell you this. I'm talking metro area. We can't oh. fit much more here, you know. Yeah. I want people to leave. They are leaving. They can't afford to live here anymore. Beijing is 24 million, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Shanghai is 35 million. That's a big city too. Nasty city, probably. Yeah. Uh, and then Jakarta, Delhi, Seoul. Seoul's big. It's 25 million. Big. Yeah, so we always think of New York City as being this big, big, big city, and then we only, well, the qu question is, when we say New York, are we including Queens, Bronx, Brooklyn? I, yeah. I didn't look at the yes. definition. Staten I just asked the metro area. Or hey, it, you know, the, like Miramar, I think, is that the country where people are burning uh, Myanmar, plastic Myanmar, bottles? Myanmar. Yeah, is, is that where they're burning plastic bottles in order to uh, cook and... And, and so forth, and their and uh, their their air pollution is so bad that uh, the it's they've got the highest rate of cancer uh, in, in the world. Um, is is it Myanmar? Myanmar, I believe it. Myanmar, yeah. Hey, Alex. What? Um, uh, Oklahoma City is way up there, but there's all these, these cities in Alaska that are gigantic. 
with nobody in them. Oh, like uh, Sitka, Alaska. Uh, where <laughs> is uh, what's her name? Uh, she was the mayor. Uh, uh, the one that ran with McCain. Palin. Palin. So, so soon Palin. you forget. Yeah. Uh, she was a mayor of some city up in Alaska. Yeah, she was in Rosella. 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 Yeah. I don't think it, it 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 takes much to become mayor of Wasilla. Okay. See, the and, problem, and it probably the doesn't take her, much to become governor of Alaska. She know. had good looks. Well, she wasn't governor for a whole term either. Right. She quit. She quit after half a term. Well, <laughs> job at Fox. She, she could see Russia from her house, though. Yeah. Well. <laughs> And True. Trump, I can see Russia. Tr my. Trump got her, has got her beat because he can see Russia from his penthouse because he rents units to a lot of Russians. <laughs> so it, it, let me let me ask Scott this. And he's it, been peed on by Russians. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, no, he's watched them allegedly. He, he, allegedly. He, he allegedly watched him watching them but, pee yeah. on each other. Russian Let's kick him out of the actors' guild. <laughs> I don't know. That's so unhygienic. I just uh, uh, anyway, uh, Scott, Texas. What, how are the politics down there lately? Uh, they're about the same, I guess. Uh, you know, we got, we do have a, you know, you know, the Democrats are starting to get a little excited, but it ain't going to change. Yeah. It's not going to change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll, they'll still, they'll be closer, but they're still going to lose, in my opinion. Wasn't there a time when Texas used to be a fairly big Democratic state? As like, before all the, I'm talking about well, like the 50s and stuff. The Alamo. That's before you know, Tom DeLay. And yeah. Sam Rayburn, they were all good big Democrats. And, yeah. and, uh, and, the and, and was. one female and governor. But, but. Ann Richards, yeah. Ann Richards, Richard, yeah. She was good. You still executing on people every day over there? Uh, we try. They try. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's in the herd. <laughs> well, you know what? What happened in Texas? This is very interesting. What happened with death penalty in Texas is that years ago they had a, a very corrupt governor by the name of Ma Ferguson. Did I, have I got the name right, uh, yeah, Scott? Yeah. Sounds familiar. Ma Ferguson, and she was like pardoning all kinds of people for murder and stuff that were her friends and her associates and her cronies and so on. So they finally made laws making it impossible for the governor to really stay executions. It had to go through that. Uh, uh, b board of whatever that they have to appeal to. And so the governor really has very little to say about it. So even if you had a really like heavily democratic uh, governor like Ann Richards, she couldn't be pardoning people like crazy because she was limited in what she could do in order to prevent an execution. And that's why there's so many executions there. As, as Amy would tell you, the governor in Texas is just a figurehead. It's really uh, no power uh, position. Uh, well, I think when, that all comes out of the days of Ma Ferguson when she ran the yeah, country. Could be. Could be. Could yeah. be. Bush really made some changes to Texas when he was governor, uh, including concealed carry and a number of uh, no, things. Well, he, he signed the law, maybe, but it was all the legislation. I mean, or he... I don't, even, I don't even know if the governor can veto anything, for all I know. I mean, yeah. I really don't, you know. He, the governor is very limited in what they can do personally. You know, it used to be that, uh, that, that well, in the case of Ma Ferguson, I mean, it was so bad under Ma Ferguson that after it was all over, they made all kinds of laws limiting what the governor could do so the cronyism wasn't going to be the order of the day. You remember Ma Parker on the Batman show? Now, was, was Ma Ferguson the, uh, a woman or a man? A man, Ma Parker. She was one no. of the uh, the villains, and she wasn't on very often. Ma Parker. No, no it was Ma Barker. But Ma Ferguson. No, Ma Parker. She was on the bat on the Batman no, TV no, show no. years ago when I was a kid. I remember Ma. Because Parker. I'm always assuming that Ma Ferguson was a woman, but it might actually be the name of a guy. Oh, okay. Were you know, they were they electing women back in those days in Texas? That's true. That is, well, guy, did she Ollie take Bob. over from her husband that died? Maybe I don't. I'm not even that, sure. That I mean, could be. That could I mean, be. You know, I, I did not grow up in this state, so I didn't have to be uh, subjected to Texas history. Oh, where, where did you, where'd you grow up? I'm from Iowa. But you've got a Texas accent now. I guess you've lived down there so long. I don't have a Texas accent. I think a little bit. Do. 
it, it's, it's I, got to, I got to tell you a quick story. When I was working, you have a slight one. When I was working oh. in Houston, Texas, I worked there for two years. Uh, I came out of there. My wife, Ronnie, uh, had a Texas accent for several years after we left. But the funny part about it was that a couple of months after we left, I called back to Texas to talk to some of my friends. And all of a sudden, I realized something I hadn't realized when I lived there. They all have Texas accents. I, when you're immersed in it, you can't hear the accent. You know why Ronnie liked to talk that way? Why? If you talk like a Texan, nobody's ever really going to hold you accountable for anything you do. Well, no, well, They'll just say, he's a Texan. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you there's something great about the Texas drawl, as it were. It's a very relaxed form of speech. That's right. That's right. It's, it's relaxed. very relaxed it's like, and casual care. and makes you feel comfortable. You know what I'm talking about? You know? Ah, ah. Georgia right. is the same thing. Yeah, huh? Yeah, Georgia, many of the uh, well, southern... Well, it is said, I was told by a speech teacher once, that the most perfect form of English in America is the southern dialect. Yeah. You know, that, that it is the perfect dialect in America. I don't know, you know, California, what's a California dialect? I can't even remember what. Do I have a dialect of any sort? No. By, mm-hmm. The Valley Girls. Out of well, there's the L.A. has a more distinct dialect than we do up here. Yeah, but, but do, does California really have a, a distinctive dialect? Here in New York, I can find a distinctive dialect. Tony can call up and we can hear a distinctive dialect. Right. I, yeah. I heard they usually wanted announcers to come out of Ohio. In Indiana. Uh, no, most of the announcers, the big announcers for years came out of Texas. Dan Rather and... Uh, oh, you're, you're, my, right. you're right. But as far as accent. the dialect. Walter does Cronkite. Walter Cronkite came out of Texas, yeah. Does yeah. my accent sound like I'm from New York? Yeah. You know, I don't a hear little, it. A little Slightly. bit. A little bit. But I think you've been, you've been... So many years have passed since you've been in New York that, uh, uh, you know, it, it will go away. Uh, but I always liked the New York accent. I always thought the New York accent in women just was a real turn on. I got a boner every time I heard it. You know, huh? I spent a little time in, in London, yeah. and the girl from London liked the New York accent. Uh, Did yeah. she really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been uh, been a real pleasure and a good show too. I thank uh, uh, Vernon Nunn for joining us. Phil Meyer for joining us. R.R. Ray Renati uh, for joining us. Scott, always love having you here. You know, uh, didn't almost didn't recognize you with your hair in a bun. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much. And uh, oh, and next time we talk, I want to ask you because you said you fell asleep in your wheelchair, and I'm trying to think. Do you? I want to ask you. Do you ever dream about walking? You have walking dreams. That's what I want to know. And Tim, thank you as well. Everybody, I think you should wave a big goodbye to everybody, okay? That's our citizens panel, folks. Goodbye. Okay, and they're going to say goodbye, and I'm going to hang up on them. Let me do this, and then I'm going to hang up on the Skype. So we have the lines ready for Jack and Amy are next with the intersection. They'll be followed closely by connections at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night, 9.30, it's the exchange with Damian Chaplin. And then tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, I'll be here once again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.